Hey everyone, it's Stacey and in today's video I'm going to show you how to do English paper piecing. Now English paper piecing is very close to my heart because it's actually the very first type of quilting that I learned to do. When I was a teenager I borrowed a book in the library and I taught myself and I really loved it and enjoyed it and I did it for many years. I have to admit I haven't done it in a while so it's been really nice revisiting it. Now something that's really nice about English paper piecing is that it's slow sewing which means you have to really slow down because we are doing it by hand you can't rush it so it just really forces you to just slow down which can be very therapeutic another great advantage of English paper piecing is that it is portable so you can take it with you wherever you go maybe you're sitting in the car waiting for your children to do an activity maybe you want to take it on vacation or my personal favorite is sitting in front of the television doing it and it is a great fabric buster so you can just use up your old scraps and make a beautiful grandmother's flower garden quilt so first let me just show you the basic tools that you're going to need and the different techniques and then i'll discuss what you can do with your grandmother flower garden pieces so to get started with english paper piecing you're going to need a few basic tools which i'll go over now plus a few other things and of course our fabric but first of all you're going to need a pair of fabric scissors and that's to cut around our template cut our fabric around our template that is or you might like to use a rotary cutter if you're going to be using strips of fabric and not just scraps you're going to need some needles honestly i just use what i've got on hand i know some people recommend milliner needles just use whatever you're most comfortable with and what works best for you you might like to use some clips i personally don't use them but you might find them handy just keeping the fabric in place as you're basting it so they're optional you might also find a thimble handy i know people recommend this style i personally use this kind the leather kind and that just helps your fingers not get too sore when you're pushing that needle through constantly when we're stitching our pieces together so those are our very basic tools now let me go over a few other things we're going to need so next up you'll need some glue if you plan on glue basting your pieces and you don't have to do this this is optional you can also use thread to do that but if you want to use glue it needs to be water soluble and you can find this sort of fabric glue in most of the quilting shops and shops like joann's and what have you i also think just normal washable glue is probably going to work too but i think it's just marketing but what we have here is actually a special fabric glue pen which dries clear and is water soluble by sew line and this is especially for paper piecing now if i just pull it out you'll see it's blue but it does dry clear and you'll see the tip is much smaller so if i compare it to this one it just allows you to be a lot more accurate with your glue so a lot of people do prefer to use the specialty glue pen here and what you it does come with um, refillable glue to pop in so this is a refill here and then once you've used this up you can actually then just buy refillable packs now i do think it's much nicer and easier to use but it definitely is more expensive you need to pick this up at a quilting shop or online somewhere like the fat quarter shop you won't find it in somewhere like hobby lobby or at least i haven't seen it there but you will find a glue like this in a general store so that's entirely up to you what you prefer to do or obviously the cheapest option is to just sew based our pieces together and i'll show you how to do that shortly so next up we have the thread and when i'm hand sewing my pieces together i like to use this thread which is wonderful and visible weight 100 and what it is is a really fine polyester thread it's really nice and strong and because it's so fine we don't see our stitches as much i'm not really a big fan of being able to see the stitches when we've sewn our pieces together and the reason why we use polyester is because when we use cotton and we're constantly hand sewing through it seems to shred and break so this invisifil thread is ideal it's used by a lot of other people that do a lot of paper piecing because it is super strong and nice and fine now if you want to hand base your templates i recommend just using any old thread you've got this one here was 99 cents and it's perfect you might have some thread that's a funny color and you don't want to use it you might have some thread that you're nearly right at the end of the spool and you want to get rid of it use that up don't use your best thread to hand base these templates so next up we have our templates and we're going to be using hexagons or also known as hexes 
Now hexes are a very traditional shape for English paper piecing and today we'll be making with our hexagons a traditional grandmother's flower garden. Now you can do all sorts of shape with English paper piecing but we're just going to be starting off with hexagons. Now they do come in different sizes. Today I will be using a 2 inch and how we measure a 2 inch hexagon is across one side here. So this is a two inch hexagon. If I measure this size, this is gonna be one and a half. So they're slightly smaller. You could use whatever size you like. You might even wanna do smaller again. Now with the templates, there's all sorts of ways of making them. These are just pre-purchased and all ready to go for you. They are reusable. So once you finish with them, you just take them out really carefully so you can reuse them again and again. Or you might like to actually make your own templates and I do have this over on my website I'll put a link in the description below and what this is is you could either print this out many times and cut it I have seen one lady what she did was she just printed it out once put a whole lot of blank sheets underneath taped it onto her cutting mat and just cut it out in one go so each time she was cutting out a shape she was actually cutting out many of them in one go or you might like to print this out on a piece of card, cut out one template, you'd need to cut it just within the line and then use that as a template to then draw many and then cut them out. So it is time consuming. When I first learned how to do paper piecing, that is actually what I did. I printed it out like this and I painstakingly cut out every single one. But like I said, they are reusable. So you can find this free template over on my website or you might like to buy them already pre-made. So let me start off with our center fabric. And now this is just a little bit of scrap I've got. And that's one of the best things about English paper piecing is you can use up scraps. So as you can see, it's a bit of a rough size, but if I place my template on top, I can see that it definitely fits within that. Now what we want is about quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch allowance around the whole template. So what I will do is I'll just take my glue and I will just dab a piece on the back here and just place it down just to hold it in place while I cut that out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my fabric scissors and cut around by eye, allowing about a quarter of an inch seam allowance or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you definitely want to have at least that quarter of an inch so we can fold it over nicely. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do is take my glue and I'm not going to glue right up along this edge. We don't want glue right on that edge because then when we fold it over and when we go to sew it together, it gets really tacky and hard to get through that glue. Oh, I'll just wind that down a bit. But what I'm going to do is draw the line right next to the line. Can you see how I've done that? Then I'm going to fold it over nice and firmly not too firm but we don't want it all slack we want that to be a really nice straight line on the edge of our template there then I'm going to come along to this next side I'll start the glue on the fabric coming along right to the very edge and now I'm going to fold it over again making sure that this fold here I'll just put my glue down for a minute is really nice tight fold on that edge there so that we're getting a really beautiful corner and I can feel that we've followed the shape of the template really nicely. Now I'm just going to continue on. Now if this is flapping up a little bit too much and I feel like it's interfering with how I'll get my nice perfect corners I will just lift it up and just dab a bit of glue just to keep that down there. But then again I'll start on the fabric and go straight across tuck that edge in and fold it down and then carry on all the way around. Okay, 
now you can see that's done now you can see that i've actually got the perfect template shape here and that's how it should be we want to see nice sharp corners nice straight edges there um, and that looks really good to me now let me do another one I've just got this fabric here and this is going to be for my outer petal so I'm going to need to make 12 pieces and I didn't use scrap fabric for this I just used a half a yard so what I did was I cut a strip and I cut the strip at four inches and a quarter knowing that that's going to fit in there absolutely perfectly so then what I'll do is I'm just going to hold that up to the fabric check that I don't have any of my salvages in it or anything and then again just by eye I'll trim that fabric okay and now what I could do is I could use my glue again to base them just like I did this one but now I'm going to show you how you could baste it with your thread if you'd like to use thread. So I'll get some thread and I'll thread my needle. So I've just got a threaded needle here. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Now it is a bit loose here and I would just work with that. But if you find that a little bit tricky to do, what you can do is just fold down a side and just pop a clip in. To hold it in place and you could do that in a couple of spots and we will fix it up before we get there but that will just help it stay in place as we're going around so what I'm going to do is fold over this top piece now I'm going to show you how I learned to do it um, and people do it slightly differently now but you've got two options here I just go straight through the template and up and back through And then I'm going to do exactly the same, but I just don't have any glue. I'm going to fold down on that corner, getting a nice straight edge here and a sharp corner. And then I'm going to go right through that corner there, holding that in place. And then I'll just come up in the center. Then I'm coming up to another corner. I'll fold that again. It's nice and sharp then I'll go down right in the middle there where I've got all the layers so that's going to be held in place really nicely and then I'll come up and then I'll just carry on around and you can remove those when you're comfortable I'm just coming up to where I started finishing off that edge it doesn't really matter where you put the stitches but just make sure it is definitely secure on the corners and then what I do is I just carry on a bit around and then come up and then I just trim my thread now that's super secure that's not going anywhere and that's how I learned to do it all the way back in the day um, you can see again I've got my really nice sharp corners and my nice straight edges there it's looking really nice and if I compare them the technique is just as good as gluing um, they are doing it a little bit differently lately I've noticed so let me just show you how some people are also doing their hand basting I'll just put some new thread on okay so taking my fabric again taking my template and again if you wanted to you could just um, pop a clip in at the bottom just to hold it in place as you're getting started but what we're going to do is fold down an edge and then we're going to fold down the second edge and we're going to start on a corner I'm going to come up and through catching that corner I've got a knot there which holds it in place and then I'm going to go through again and that's just going to get me started and be nice and secure now I'm just going to come across I'm not going to go through the template but I'm just going to go through the fabric to help me get across to the next corner 
I'm going to fold that down just like I have been and now I'm going to go up under the fabric and into the corner not catching the template just catching the fabric then again I'll just go under and up just to get through to the next corner Whoop. I, I do find this more tricky I definitely think it's easier to do it through the template so now I'm just going to carry on and go around all my edges just like I did until I've finished the template well finish the hex again that is Okay, and now I'm back to where I started. I'll just go back through and I'll just go around a little bit more so it's nice and secure. And then I'll cut that thread. And if I turn it over, you can see that I still get my nice sharp corners and my straight edges. I'm not entirely sure it's as secure as it is if we go straight through the hexagon piece. So if I had a choice, I would definitely do that. I think that people do it this new way, so they're not damaging their template. But in reality, it's just a few little holes and it doesn't affect the integrity of the template. But do it however you prefer. There's three different options there. What we need to do now is we need to make one in this fabric, your center fabric, six in your petal fabric, and then 12 in your outer fabric. And I'll meet you back here and we'll sew them together. So I've finished making my hexagons. Now let's sew them together. I have my Invisifil thread here and I'm going to cut a piece. I'm not going to make it too long. The rule of thumb is approximately the length from your hand to your elbow. And that's because even though it is polyester and nice and strong, it still will weaken the thread as with sewing through all the stitches. So I'm just going to show you a quilter's knot. I'm going to pop the thread through the eye of my needle and pull it through. It's very fine, so I hope you can see this. Then what I'm going to do is find the end of my thread and I'm going to place the end of the thread on my index finger. Then I'm going to pop the needle on top, holding the end of the thread securely there. Then I'm going to wrap the thread around my needle about four times Then, when I'm finished what I'm going to do is push all those layers up together grab it with my other two fingers and then pull the needle through and then that way we end up with a nice chunky knot at the end which will help it stay in place as we're sewing it together so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my center of my flower and my first row of petals and we're going to sew all the petals around the center let me just show you how that will look and you could have a play with your fabric and just make sure that you're happy how they're all sitting you might want to just check that you're really happy with how they're placed before you sew them together. I think that looks pretty cute. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is sew the centerpiece to one of our petals. Doesn't matter which one we sew first. I'm gonna place the two pieces right sides together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the edges, the edge at the top here, the sides, and making sure the corners are really nicely lined up. Then I'm going to take my needle and start stitching and I'm going to start on the very edge there and I'm just catching a few threads of the fabric not a lot and I'm trying not to go through the cardboard or the templates then I'll pull that through now our thread is very fine so I'm going to find the knot and stop at the knot and you might like to just put your finger down on top of the knot to stop it pulling through because if you pull a little bit too hard it will pull through just because the thread is so fine but now I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through again at exactly the same spot. Pull it through and then once I see my loop, I'm just going to put my needle through the loop which will create a knot. So now we've gone through twice in the beginning as well as done a knot and that just makes our beginning really nice and secure. So I like to do that at the beginning and at the end and that just helps us not get holes where our hexagons are joined. So once I've done that, now I'm just going to carry along and whip stitch to the end. So 
so I'm just going through a few threads of the fabric and I'll stitch all the way to the very end. Now it really is a personal preference how close you like to do your stitches. Sometimes I find I'm doing them way too close and it's a little bit silly so just work out what works best for you and remembering the closer the stitches are together the longer it will take you. So this is called a whip stitch, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. So we're literally just going through the fabric, or through a few threads of the fabric, pulling it up and out, and then moving along and down, and then back through. Just a really simple stitch. Now we do want to pull it firmly we don't want to pull it too firmly, we don't want to break our thread, but we do want to pull it firmly so it's going to be sewn together really nice and securely. We don't want to open it up and then to be able to pull at them and see all our stitches. So I just give it a really gentle tug after each stitch. Okay, so now I'm coming to the very end. I'm going to stitch through and then I'm going to stitch through again right at the end. So two stitches at the beginning and the end and a knot. So when I can see my loop, I'm going to pop my needle through that loop creating a nice knot. So that's going to be really nice and secure. So if I open it up, you can now see that they've been sewn together really nicely. Now, now what we need to do is, oh, let me pop that back in the middle. Now we need to sew a piece on either to this side or this side. It doesn't matter which side, but my thread is here. So it's going to make sense to sew it onto this side here. So what I'll do is I'll pick it up and attach that. Now we've got two options here. What you might like to do is you might like to do exactly the same thing and attach all the petals. But then you're going to have these openings here. So that would mean you're going to have to come back and hand sew all the openings. I actually prefer to now, instead of sewing this on, let me show you this way. Instead of sewing it on so it's attached here, I'm actually going to attach it here. Although I don't like those two daisies together. Let me swap it there. That looks better. I'm going to now stitch along this edge. So let me do that. So all I'll do is exactly the same thing. I'm going to fold it together, right sides together. I'm going to line up all those edges. I'm going to line up the corners. I'm going to find my thread. Oh, what's happened here? So here we go. Here's the end of my thread here. And all I'm going to do is start stitching along that edge. Now I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to do two stitches at this very edge here because I don't want big holes in my corners and I want it to be nice and secure. So I'm going to go one, two, I can see my loop, I'm going to pop my needle through my loop and now I'm going to carry on stitching just like I did till I get to the end and then at the end another two stitches and going through the loop. Okay so now I've come to the end again I'm going to stitch again two stitches on the end and then when I've got that loop there I'm going to go through the loop making it really nice and secure. So now if I open it up that's what we can see but now I need to sew along here so that then I can attach my next petal. So what I'm going to do is turn it back over and I'm just going to run my needle very close to the stitches down. I like to just catch it on there so it's not just a loose thread. And down so we can get back to the center. Okay, so now we're back in the center. Now I'm going to sew along here, joining this piece here. So I'm going to fold it, and it doesn't matter if this one gets a little bit bent. I'm going to fold it, line up all those edges again, 
and do exactly the same thing. I'm going to start right on the edge, do two stitches and do a knot, go all the way to the edge, two stitches at the end and then go through the knot. Okay, so now you can see I've sewn along this edge. Now let's attach the rest of our petals and I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll put the next petal here. I'll stitch along here, run the thread back down, stitch along here, then add the next petal and I'll carry on until I've gone all the way around. And when you need to, just replace your thread. So now that I've finished sewing these petals to the center, then we're going to take our outer petals and do exactly the same thing. And you'll see that they just sort of fit in like a jigsaw puzzle. So if I just place them around the edge like that, you'll see how that's going to work. And then what I suggest you do is sew them in the best way that you think to do it, like the way you're most comfortable with. For me, I would sew along here, along here, and then join this one up, come back down, and then carry on across. But like I said, you just do whatever works best for you. And then once we've done that, we have finished our traditional grandmother's flower garden. So I'm actually going to swap over to a grandmother's flower garden that I finished earlier. I just wanted to quickly show you on the back. I leave all the paper in until I'm ready to do something with it, like I'm ready to turn it into a pillow or a quilt or what have you. Um, but you can move any of the ones that have got a paper piece around them. So for example, the center one could come out. And if I'd done the outer petals, these ones could come out. But I personally just leave them all in until I'm ready to take them out and make something with it. And then all you do is just lift it up really carefully. Um, um, you can see the glue's coming off really nice and easily there. And then I just pull it out like that and then save that for another time. If it was a thread basted, I'd just pull the thread out carefully. And then what I would do is I would give it a really good press and I would even use a little bit of starch just to get these outer edges really nice and crisp. And if you, let's say you did the glue a long time ago and it's a little bit tricky to get off, what you can do is iron it with a bit of steam and that can help loosen the glue up. So now let me just flip over to my finished project just to give you a few ideas of what you could do with your finished grandmother's flower gardens. So when we sew our hexes together like this, we do create what is called the grandmother's flower garden. And then there's lots of things you can do with it. So you can see here, I made a cushion. It's super cute. And this is with the two inch hexagons. Then um, I started making another cushion just to see how the different sizes would be. And this is actually one and a half inches in the hexes. And you can see how that's actually quite a bit smaller. Now, you can do anything you want with them. In the past, I've made very little ones and actually sewn them onto a little onesie, which was really cute. You could sew them onto a cardigan. You just basically you're limited to whatever ideas you can come up with. Um, I like to sew them onto cushions. I think they look super cute. So all I did here was I basically got three layers. I've got my backing, my batting and my front fabric. So just like a quilt. But then I sewed my grandmother's flower garden on and I did use some starch just to make sure it was really nice and crisp. And then you can see it's on the back there where I've sewn it on. Um, when I made the cushion, when I actually finished it off, I then actually stitched around the edge of it doing an echo stitch. And then I did stitch in the ditch around it as well just to make it more defined. But really just do whatever you want to do. Um, what is traditional for a quilt is to them is to first make your grandmother's flower garden and you'd make many, many, many. And I'm guessing in the olden days it was all with scrap fabric, so they would all be different, which would be absolutely beautiful. But of course, you could make them all the same. Really, it's up to you. But then what you would do is you would then do hexagons in a plain fabric to join them. So um, I didn't finish this one, but if you can imagine if we had a plain hexagon in the middle here, it would then join them. And just like when I showed you adding on that last petal, it became like a puzzle. It's exactly the same thing when you're trying to make a quilt with lots of them. It literally is just like a puzzle and it all fits together absolutely perfectly. 
So like I keep saying, the sky is the limit. And this is just one example of English paper piecing, probably the most traditional and classic. You'll find many quilts done in this style, but there's also amazing patterns that use this technique. Um, just do a Google and search English paper piecing patterns, and you'll be amazed at what you can actually make using this technique which is a really nice thing to do if you're going on vacation and just want to have something with you or you want to slow down a bit or have something to do in front of the TV. Anyway, I'm going on. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next week when we're going to be doing our first mystery block of the month for 2023.